What was that moment you got revenge? Part 1 Number 1 During our 100 multiple choice law exam, I wrote all my answers on the original exam page and colored in wrong answers on the Scantron sheet. The girl who copied me since day one thought she was going to pass this exam worth 30% of our final mark. She looked over and copied almost each of my Scantron answer, then guessed a few, handed it in, and left for the winter break. I erased all my old answers, put the correct answers in, handed it in, and left. I got 71 out of 100 and barely managed to pass that class. I'll find out what she got on Tuesday when I maybe see her with a gun at my locker. Number two, driving to drop someone off my radar detector went off. Saw a cop sitting in a parking lot, dropped off my friend and headed back. The whole way some butt is tailgating me, speed limit is 40. I'm doing 45 and he's so close I can see his headlights. We come up to a traffic circle and he tries to pass me on the right. I sped up and he kept trying. We hit about 80 to 90 with him on the shoulder. Come up the crest of a hill and I know the cop is right on the other side. I hit the brakes and he flew up over the hill. Had to be doing 90 in a 40. I even stopped to let the cop out of the parking spot. Most satisfying thing ever. Number 3. When I was 11 years old, I was bullied by a 12-year-old boy. He would steal things from my lunch every day. I got sick of it and decided to do something about it. One day I brought a super hot pepper in my lunch and pretended to be really excited about it. Sure enough, the boy comes over, snatches it from my hands, and puts it in his mouth. He practically exploded in pain, writhing around the floor, unable to handle the heat. I calmly looked at him and told him that drinking a nice glass of cold water would help immensely. He did so. This promptly magnified the pain 100 times. He never stole food from me again. I regret nothing. Number four. This may seem small, but it was the most satisfying thing I have ever done. When I was in the seventh grade, I sat behind a jerk who hated me and enjoyed being annoying. Every single goddamn day, he would lean back in his chair and hit the front of my desk over and over again. If I was trying to write something, he would do it even harder. So one day I decided enough was enough, and in the middle of a lesson, he started again. So I waited and write. As he was leaning his chair back fast, trying to knock my desk hard, I pulled it back without my desk behind him. His chair tipped right over, and he hit the ground hard. I can still clearly remember him whispering, You be, beneath the laughter of the whole class and the teacher yelling at him to get up. The look on his face was a mixture of shock, embarrassment, and pure rage as he looked up at me from the floor. Bastard. Never effed with me again. Number five. My first real boyfriend, we kissed instead of just holding hands. Kissed another girl and dumped me for her when I was a freshman in high school. She had actively pursued him, although she knew he had a girlfriend, so I blamed her rather than him. I know, I know. Fast forward four years. I was a volleyball player throughout college. In the off-season, I played in a city women's league and a co-ed league as an outside hitter. My team played a new team with a familiar face. She didn't recognize me different high schools, but I immediately recognized her. My team setter kept giving me amazing sets, and I kept slamming the ball over the net, just waiting for my shot. Finally, she was in the back row, and my setter set me up. I hit the ball, and the boyfriend stealer stepped into the hit. It bounced off her foot and went straight up into her face and broke her nose. Number six. When I was 12 years old, a kid beat me up at a birthday party for reasons unknown. Four years later, the kid is a pitcher and a very good one at that for his school in the playoffs. I was playing for the other team. After going 0-3 and three to start the game, I hit a walk-off home run off him to advance to the next round. Kid actually started crying on the mound. I don't think I've ever had a bigger smile than I did in that moment. Still have the ball in my apartment at college. Number 7. A crappy repair shop in Moab, Utah messed up our car, which left us stranded in a nearby national park. We called and demanded they tow the vehicle in, and while they said they'd come get us, they never did. When we talked with park rangers, they were quite familiar with the shop, the biggest in town, and with a terrible reputation. We were on our honeymoon and had more time on our hands than I imagine most travelers do. We went to the shop, demanded a full refund, and when they refused, we sat out front on the curb in our camp chairs for two days with homemade protest signs.
I was overwhelmed with the support we got from locals who honked and waved, stopped and chatted with us and shared their own stories of horror. The owner called the cops on us, but the joke was on him. We'd already notified the police. We'd be protesting and were well within our rights in doing so. In the end, the shop owner refunded all our money and left visibly distressed when we told him that even with the refund, we weren't sure we were ready to leave town. Eventually we did, but not before filing complaints with a Better Business Bureau and every review site we could find. They'd already been booted from the Chamber of Commerce. We ended up becoming friends with an awesome local mechanic and having a great story to tell. Justice was served and was without a tinge of guilt. Number eight, a kid I was friends with hit me in the balls three times in one night. He then called me a wee baby and got in my face. He tried to make me flinch by half swinging at me. I didn't flinch, but instead head butted him with everything I had, crushed his nose, blood pouring out of his face. I had a tiny cut in the center of my forehead with one line of blood running down my face. I looked effing psychotic, but bad A. Also F you for that, David. Number nine, beating the crap out of the man who abused and beat my mother for six years. Seven years later, and she still has no idea. Number ten, I ground up laxatives and tainted all my kitchen fridge food with it to figure out which of my seven roommates was eating all my food while I survived off a secret stash in my mini fridge. I found out who did it very, very quickly. Number 11. When I was a kid, probably four or five years old, I was watching Dumbo with my neighbor. The elephants on parade part was scary as all hell to me back then, and I peed my pants. My neighbor told everyone in my pre-K class and would not stop calling me the pants peer for weeks. Finally, one day I slept over at her house and took a pair of her pants out of the closet, put them on and peed in them. I woke her up to show her, and that's the story of how I became the two times pants peer. Number 12. Telling a group of baseball buddies that were picking on my younger brother that Snape kills Dumbledore in half blood prints after realizing they had all just started it. Number 13. I closed on selling my house, but the buyers were real a holes with insane demands and stupid crap. I was fed up. So on move-out day, I bought a couple of wasp traps and put the attractant into a hole in the garage drywall. Effers number 14. Back in the summer of 09, me and my girlfriend were going pretty strong. Anyway, I found out she was effing this guy on the side. She admitted it and said she was sorry, and I dumped her. I didn't know the guy, but I remembered his name. One night at a party a few months later, I got introduced to a guy I thought was him. I slightly worked out. It was him. I'm not a guy to hold a grudge, generally, but this was something else. I didn't want to do anything to him, but what? I walked into a bedroom to take a phone call, and there he was, passed out drunk on the bed. I didn't know what to do, but I knew I had too good an opportunity to pass it up. I was pretty drunk at the time, but the first thing I thought of was to take a dump on him. I passed it off as a stupid idea, but I couldn't think of anything else. So, I went with it. I left the party just after and haven't seen or heard from him since. Not a day goes by, I don't think about it. Needless to say, I haven't told anyone about this in real life, I'm not sure, but I think it is safe to say vengeance was a dish best served crappy. Number 15. My college roommate had a sketchy friend he would invite over. My textbook was stolen the weekend before my final. I went to the bookstore and found the book. I had note cards that I used as bookmarks still in the book. I texted my roommate's friend and made up a story that the bookstore was going to press charges unless he gave the money back. He confessed over the phone and told me to meet him at his place to get the money. When I got there, he was smoking a bong. After taking the money, I poured the bong over his head and told him to never come to my place ever again. Number 16. X cheated on me. Moved out, but moved out slowly over time, which meant I still lived with a lot of her stuff. Some of her clothes were left in the closet. I cut teeny tiny corners off every sleeve, but barely enough to be noticeable. You'd have to think you were going insane to notice it. But then again, over time, each sleeve did look somewhat off. She eventually asked me about it months later. I denied everything. I regret nothing. Number 17.